Let's stand up for the prayers. It is the Lord's Sabbath. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, verse 9. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Psalm 23. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. All praises to the Most High, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your mercies, your blessings, your healings, your Holy Spirit, love, protection, and truth. He also asks for this, for not only for us, but for all thy saints scattered throughout the world. We also ask for the mercies upon the souls of those that have departed, but thou knowest the hearts of men, that they be comforted in the resurrection unto eternal life. All praises to the Most High in the name of Christ and our coming together in this holy convocation. And let us receive thy word with joyfulness and with temperance and faith, and with commitment. All praises to the Most High in the name of Christ who have not forgotten us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Be seated. and blessings Israel. May the Most High in Christ bless you all. One second. So again, my name is Brother Rama of the Boston Church. The church located in the Boston region. We teach the Apostles' Doctrine, which is the, another way of saying the Gospel of the Christ. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, being a dark-skinned man with woolly hair, and we teach thus as according to as it is written, not religion. We don't teach religion, so you will not hear the old-time religion. You will not hear the lies and the false philosophies that have brainwashed the world. What you will hear is the written word, and then another written word, and then another written word, and then another written word. And all the prophets agree. To disagree the words of the prophets. All praises. And so the Most High have given, up his, given us his law. To hear ye at his word. And we to tremble at his word. So let's start with that. Isaiah 66 and 1. Okay, we got to get into the habit of trembling at the Most High's word. Okay. It's going to speak about not being uh, deceived where we're hearers of the word and not doers of the word, right? So just a common message of to exhort the believers so that we're not complacent. And so I'll take a reader. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Let's check it out.
So Isaiah 66 and 1. Who won it? Oh, you got it. You can sit or you can stand if you want. Huh? Okay. Isaiah 66 verse 1. Okay, come on. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. Where is the house that she built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? So where is the house that we can limit the Most High to? Where can we say the Most High is limited to this building, or this region, or this part of the planet? Right? We can't. Continue. For all those things have my hand made, mm -hmm. and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. So if we're going to say that the Most High dwells anywhere, he said to this what? To this man. Man. So he's not necessarily in a building, but he's much more so in a vessel. A brother or sister. What kind of man? Go ahead. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. Meaning humble. Contrite meaning uh, honest and true. Right? Virtuous. Continue. And trembleth at my word. And what? Trembleth at my word. That's the key why we went to this scripture. To tremble at the Most High's word. That's what he means. Whoso feareth the Lord. Right? Because the Most High have not given us the spirit of fear. But this trembling or fearing at the word of the, is at the reverence of the Most High's word. That's what it means in context. Right? So do we reverence the Most High's word in, on simple things? Because if we can't reverence his word on simple things, you know we're going to have a problem on the more major things. Especially when that adversity comes. You see? So the Lord looking for that kind of man. Or that kind of sister. That will tremble at his word. Alright. And so let's go to the next scripture. In the Apocrypha. We were talking about it on. Um, the last class. So let's head back to Ecclesiasticus 15 and 11. And the reason why we're going over these scriptures because we've we've been dealing with the week of Hanukkah or the Feast of the Dedication. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that story, that history of Hanukkah, you'll see that the righteous prevail while the wicked got their whole plots and schemes shut down and had to answer to the Lord. Right? And it wasn't right away. But the Most High is definite. When he, when he pronounces something, he knows what he's saying. And he performs his word. So people think because they ain't seen judgment yet that the Bible somehow a, a, a book of comedy. But if it's so much a book of comedy, why are people dying every day? You see? Why are people suffering? They were having a great time without the Bible. So, let's check it out. Ecclesiastes 15 and 11. That's in the Apocrypha. Ecclesiastes 15 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Say not thou. It is through the Lord that I fell away. Uh -huh. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hated. Okay, so that goes with this one, Ecclesiastes 32, 17. Remember we said we want to hear the word at the Lord's mouth and tremble at that word? So we're going to be going precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, line upon line, so forth, so we can hear that word. I'll praise it. We'll come back to Ecclesiastes 15. Ecclesiastes 32, 17. What does that say? A sinful man will not be reproved, uh -huh. but findeth an excuse according to his will. Okay, so 
bear with us. All the scriptures we pulling, there's a method to this, right? Take our time. Right? So read it again. A sinful man will not be reproved, uh -huh. but findeth an excuse according to his will. Okay, so that goes with what we read in Ecclesiastes 15. When we in the blindness of our sins, and I say we, we end up finding a justification for those sins. And a lot of times that justification where we have to lie to ourselves and blame others. So what tends to happen? We end up in whatever who we blaming, we really blaming the Most High. Because you're either blaming the Most High or the creation of the Most High. That woman. The white man. My job. My boss. Those bad kids. Right? But what does that have to do when we sin, though? Right? So a sinful man, he's going to make it, he's going to frame it so that he never repents. He's got excuses. So this is a good scripture for people who locked into making excuses instead of being accountable. Okay, we have to be accountable, is it? So read it again, tell them we are. Ecclesiasticus 32, verse 17. Uh -huh. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. So I wanted to read that so we get more context what would have said in Ecclesiastes 15. When we blame in the Most High, we blame in circumstances, situation, blah, blah, blah. Right there it tells about that person's character. Now, we can repent of that, but a lot of times, the sin, because remember, Scripture says the deceitfulness of sin, right? When one is blinded through the deceitfulness of sin, because the mistake was to, to give in to the sin to begin with. So now you get all the repercussions that come with falling into sin. We start rationalizing and reasoning that it's not really a sin. It's not all that bad. I'm not really breaking the scriptures, right? That person is, but not me, right? That's a sinful man. And no matter what someone tells them or how much the Lord lick them, they be get catching licks. Bop, 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 bop. What happened, brother? Car accident. What happened, brother? Children sick. What happened, brother? Got called in, got a, got written up on my job. What happened, bro? Speeding ticket. What happened, brother? Broke my leg. What happened? And just on and on and on. And he's still cutting up. So he broke, he got a broke leg and a speeding ticket. But it ain't him. Lord's been trying to show him and show him and show him. But it ain't him. Somebody put ice on the road. Right? This is, I'm, I'm being facetious, but it, it's that ridiculous a lot of times when we won't see ourselves. Right? And the Lord be trying to slow us down because because he loves us, he don't take us away from our breath. And he be trying to show us. Right? So we can't be sinful. We got to slow down. Really slow down. Because the way we're getting out of this crooked world is the simplicity in Christ. That's what the Lord requires. You don't want it. Brother, did you know the breakdown of Daniel 8 or Daniel 11? No. Did you keep those two great commandments? The love of the Father and the love of thy neighbors thyself. That's what we're going to come down to. Or did you make your own, you framed your own love? I'm going to love God this way and I'm going to love my brother upon earth that way. That ain't how it works. So we got a lot of work cut out. All right, let's head back to Ecclesiastes 15 and 11. All right. And I say, you know, I, I use myself for an example. Back in um, 1990, I just started going through a rash of like a series of bad events. 
and I had to think, I'm like, why, what's going on, right? And what was going on is the Lord showed me the word concerning Israelite, the Most High, Christ, all that, in 89. And so, but I still want to be, you know, cool dude, young brother, cool dude. And within a year's time, man, a lot happened. I'm like, what's going on? Right? And so, seeing I had a church background, right? And that's one thing they taught, like, hold on, brother. <laughs> like, they always put us in mind that, you know, things happen for a reason. So I had that upbringing. And the scriptures said it the best, right? The scriptures said it the best. And I said, yeah, I got to really get myself together. And it sparked where I got a little, I got more serious. And I started taking these scriptures serious, all praises. I didn't say I was fully there, but it was, it was a, it was like a, um, a change, one of the changing points in my young adulthood, I'll praise it. So, you know, just using myself for an example, the Lord be trying to slow us down and, and show us. It's just, are we listening? Right? But, all right, so Ecclesiastes 15 and 11. Come on, brother. And we in the Apocrypha, the King James Apocrypha. Say not thou. It is through the Lord that I fell away. Uh -huh. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hates. Okay, so we're not to blame others for when we break his scriptures. Because we're not, we're not to, we ought not to do the things the Lord hate, right? It's common sense. So go ahead. Say not thou, he hath caused me to err. Uh -huh. For he hath no need of the sinful man. Okay, so think about the first time sin entered the world. Right? The first time sin entered the world, and God asked Adam, Adam, where art thou? And how did Adam say, Lord, you caused me to err? How did he say it? Who remembers? He said it was a woman that thou was given me. Say it again. He said it was a woman that thou was given me. Right. He said, the woman you gave me, and I did eat of the tree. You see? So right there, because he was corrupted already, he took and he, he played with that. He entertained sin. The devil was cracking up. The devil did his job well. And right there, Adam, who never talked like that, in his pride, say, well, the woman you gave me. Right? So he's going to throw that. So he's framing it now. So the very first sin or, or in situation of sin between Adam and Eve, which Eve sinned first, but the reason why the Lord checked Adam because Adam is the husband and the man of the house. And that's how the Lord deal. He holds the men of our nation to higher responsibility than our wives. Because there's an order according to the scriptures. The man is the the head over his house, his wife, and so forth. And the woman is the helpmate to the man. And as the man is the representation or image of the God that created him, the woman is the image of the man. Right? She's to represent her husband as her husband represents the Most High through Christ. And so the whole order represents righteousness. <clears throat> now we know society bucks that order because the devil... Right? The term Satan means adverse, adversary. He's adverse. He's going he's to promote. I was going to say push and promote. He's going to, I got to slow down. He's going to promote the things that are contrary to the scriptures. Right? So, out of orderness or upside downness is normal to society. While the scriptures, which is the true normal, is like upside down to them. They can't figure it out. So they look at us strange, or anybody that tries to follow the Holy Scriptures. Right? All right, so let's continue. 12 verse. Say not that. I mean, 13 verse. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. The Lord hateth all abomination. Mm -hmm. 
And they that fear God love it not. So we talking about the Most High, right? How are we going to blame the Most High who hates all abominations? It doesn't add up. The Most High hates all abomination. And there's actual laws where he tell you that's an abomination. The, eat, the breaking of the dietary law, like eating swine, he said that's an abomination. Men messing with men, he said that's an abomination. Women with women, abomination. Whoredom, men and women dealing outside of a proper sanctity of marriage, he calls that abomination. Right? So, this is a God who hateth all iniquity. And he holds the standard high. Right? That's why Christ, when he came in the flesh, he said, Be ye therefore perfect as the Most High God in heaven is perfect. Now, why would Christ, Yahweh right, the Messiah, Hamashiach, Yahweh the anointed Savior, why would he hold man to a standard so high, knowing that man wasn't perfect? What scripture today indicates that answer? Why he would hold man who's not perfect to a standard of being perfect? What scripture can we say? that we read today kind of gives us an answer. Okay, it's 66, one and two. True. True. One who trembles at the word of the Most High. This scripture we read it now. The scripture we read it now it explains that the Most High, there's no way the Most High would condone sin. Right? The scripture we read now, he have no need of the what? Sinful man. It doesn't add up. Right? So that's why Christ set the bar high. So no one of God's people can say, there was a time where Christ said, I could go to the club. Right? There was a time when Christ said I could get my drink on and go to the club and, and I don't even know, know her name. She don't know my name and we just do our thing because I'm in college. I mean, you way down the street. That's too much excuses. But society provides those false liberties and it makes perfect sense to those that's in, in agreement with society. But it does not make any sense when it comes to the Most High and His law. You understand? All right. So we under grace. But that grace was meant so that we can get a new chance to come at this law in a spiritual sense. In a proper sense. Not going through the motions, right? Like the Old Covenant. But actually being doers of the Word, not hearers only. Okay. So we under grace. But it never gave us a license to sin. Continue. Please ask us 15 and 14. Come on. He himself. He made, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He himself made man from the beginning mm -hmm. and left him in the hand of his counsel. So from the time he created Adam, Eve, and everyone from the beginning, right? As time, the generations are building up. Man has always had choice. The Lord does not get off the throne and make you love him. Stop, my son. Come on out of this club. He's in there. Come on, my son. He's doing that. All right. Go ahead. If thou wilt to keep the commandments mm -hmm. and to perform acceptable faithfulness, he hath set fire and water before thee. Mm -hmm. Stretch forth thy hand, thy hand unto whether thou wilt. So again, he's saying a similar thing. You got fire and water. You have a choice. You have a choice between destruction or blessings. Annihilation or nourishment. Fire consumes, water nourishes. Water brings life. How plants grow, agriculture grows. Right? Go ahead. 
before man is life and death. Okay, so man don't know it because they said, I got to live my life. But they don't know you have a choice between life and death, I mean, everlasting life or everlasting shame and contempt. Go ahead. And whether, and whether him like it shall be given. So whatever your choice is, the Lord gives you the rewards tied to those, those choices. Is that fair to say? So, okay. So when people say, I don't believe in God. I know a brother, he's, I don't believe in God. I say, yeah, why? Because if there's a God, then why is there poor people? And why is this? And why is that? Why is it? Right? And what, what I, I seen right through the brother, he's his own God. When people start trying to come at the most high, check the source. They're their own God. The brother be presumptuous, talking all kinds of mess. Then we find out he was hiding. The boss looking for him. He hiding. Right? Supposed to be on break. We ain't seen him, right? He's in the, one of the uh, parts of the building. He's in a boiler room. Eating a banana, bro. Now, when you know the boss leave his office to, to look for you around the building, it was a big building. It was years ago. And what was his problem? He was presumptuous. So somebody ran him out and, and told where his hiding spot was at. <laughs> so the Edomite went down there, hey, uh, what you doing? I'm doing like all y'all white folks be doing. Wrong again. See, you can't do that. Right? So he's he's God. He's never wrong. Then instead of admitting he was wrong, he said, I'm doing like all y'all do. Don't realize once you do that. <laughs> so now he the, the boss gotta come at all those Edomites. That's doing what you do. Right? In the real world, that don't go well, do it? They're more inclined to look the other way, but they'll come at you, though. Right? You may have some exceptions, so let's not generalize. But he was in the wrong, and then he tried to make it a race issue. <laughs> Even the most high laughing at that one. Like, okay, buddy. Right? But well, the other day, there's no God. Right? So then they told me, I said, what? You know, I, people talk. I, you know, I, was, I thought it was hilarious. I love me some fun. So then, about, because uh, I, I don't want to mix the, the two, two events, two separate events. But there was a separate time uh, before that when he was saying the, the whole thing about he don't believe in that there's a God. I think about a week later or so, it was a real bad thunderstorm. I mean, bad. And it was thundering, thundering, thundering. It was shaking houses, man. It shook the whole city. And um, people came in the following day. And he said, man, I was scared for my life. All that thunder came from heaven and such and such and all that. I said, I, we was on break. I looked at him. I said, hey, uh, why didn't you say there was no God? So what you scared for? Everybody was eating a little, ooh, like that. I say, nah, right? And it was the older brother, but I felt like I didn't like it because he was proud, and like he liked be bullying people, right? All he's saying stuff. I was a young man. I said, nah, you be just the most high man. Now we gonna come at you. I thought it was no God. What you scared for? He got quiet. I said, okay. And I went back to eating. Like stop. We were cool. We, you know, we all boys at the job, but you know, he, he, he's just a mess when people they they find excuses to not listen to the Most High who created us. That's really what what, what I'm talking about. You know. So let's read on. <laughs> he got in the bed, boy, Lord, eat a banana. <laughs> that made me laugh more. Oh Lord. So Ecclesiastes 15, read 17 again, please. For poor man is life and death, uh -huh. and whether him like it shall be given. Okay, so again, we're telling the Most High how we live, 
throughout lifestyle, if you for or against him, he already know. That's why he sent his son to die for us. He needs you to figure it out. Because with all that grace and mercy, that space of repentance runs out. Right. So why are we going through all these scriptures today? Because Hanukkah represents a time where it was a battle between good and evil, between righteousness and wickedness, between those who were going to stand tall for the Most High as opposed to those that were going to conform. That's what that whole time was about. And that, that, that Hanukkah, that feast of the dedication that we celebrate for a week long, approximately eight days, that was the Lord delivering the righteous for standing tall. It took three years, but through patience and comfort of scriptures, we had hope. You see? All praises. So read on 18 verse. Please ask us 15, 18. For the wisdom of the Lord is great, uh -huh. and he is mighty in power, and beholdeth all saints. Okay, we can't fool the most high. Go ahead. And his eyes are upon them that fear him. And he knoweth every work of man. Mm -hmm. He hath commanded no man to do wicked. So think about it. Someone asks you, hey, um, you know, I was thinking about this situation. And, you know, this girl, I got her phone number. I just make up something. So I got her phone number. And it seems like she's really interested in me. And, uh, you know, so we're going to go out. And, uh, and then have a few drinks, and we'll see where that goes. What's going to be your response after knowing this scripture? He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. What would you be your smart response? Smart meaning like scriptural response. Come on, man. That's not all, you know. Interrupt each other. Scriptures are married. Like Say that again. You go into scriptures about married. Right. You you gonna add a very good answer. You are gonna add some way give an opportunity. Give him either scripture or, or like one or two or quote. Well, it depends. But one thing you're not gonna do is give him license to sin. Correct. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Brother says, hey, I don't, you know, I really want to get to know this girl. Okay, well, hold on, brother. What does the scriptures teach us about any man and woman coming together? It says, let them marry only in the who? The Lord, don't it? Corinthians 7? Okay, so any man with a woman, according to God, it has to be marriage. And we're not talking about marriage through the justice of the peace. Getting a ring on the finger. That ain't, well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a man and woman coming together to be in each other's life with the foundation being the most high in Christ. That's a lifetime carrying on into being heirs together unto the grace of life. In other words, the, the world to come. Now that's some serious love. You got brought, they do not want to see their woman when they get home from work let alone they got to be tied to a come resurrection, the kingdom to come. That's like too much information. They're not trying to understand, right? But there are the few that the Lord have blessed us, right, throughout the earth. Amongst all nations, when you think about it, you have those who kept marriage as a thing of sanctity, right? But society have always pressed through gradualism to make a man and woman come together to desensitize the importance of marriage and make it as if it's normal. They would call it something sex. What do they call it? What do you say? Casual sex. Now, where that doctrine come from? The Bible? Nah. That's giving someone license to sin. Brother, don't you know the scriptures speak about sitting with a woman? Lust gonna kindle as a fire. You sitting with her at the drink. And then you, or one thing led to another. And then we already know how this goes. Because you didn't go through the proper process, how the scriptures say, you say prove a friend. 
let alone a woman that's supposed to be tied to you as one flesh. She's not proven. You don't know that homegirl. Yeah, but, you know, we've been talking on the way, wait, 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 talking how? Well, you know, we had to, she's a co-worker. Co-worker, okay, well, listen. Go about it scripturally, man, but do not put yourself in a position where you kicking the tires, man. That's fornication. Because then that's what the world does. People doing the things that come with marriage, like the intimacy, like the flirting and the courting and the everything. That's a man and his woman that's doing that. Then once they fulfill their lust, which that was the real reason why they was having the drinks, but we lying to ourselves, right? So then what happens? They start that once the covetousness is fulfilled, they start seeing each other. It's a, it's a miracle that they didn't see this before they laid with each other. But now that they want a reason to separate, they start seeing each other. Wait a minute. This guy is lazy. Hey, wait a minute. This woman can't cook. That should wait a minute. This guy don't wash his feet. He got his feet smell up the room. Right? Then she they hit, wait a minute. This girl has bad breath. Right? And then they be on and on. Right? Wait a this brother's selfish. He doesn't provide for the woman, he don't protect the woman. He weak. Wait a second. How you see all that now? But you ain't seen that before you got with him, because at the dinner dinner table, he was frightened. He borrowed money to buy the big steak dinner, right? And owe that brother money. But you, you ain't understood it, right? Go ahead, baby girl. We popping bottles with somebody else's money. He, he playing. But then somehow, when all the, the covetousness is fulfilled, we see the guy, or we see the girl. Man, you're right, man. That girl was trouble. I ain't you right. The most high is right, brother. Right? So we do spend time on trying to teach about, you know, men and women and relationships based on scripture, not based on emotions, not based on society. Ain't no man supposed to get on his knee and put a ring on the woman's left index finger. Now, a lot of people don't know what that means. Well, you learn this Bible, you know exactly what you're doing if you was to do that. It's completely contrary to how the husband and wife are supposed to operate in the, in the glory that the Most High created them in. It's like powerful, man, when you do things according to the Scriptures. So you see, and the devil can't shake it, don't matter what ups and downs in that relationship. The devil can't shake it. Because Christ is the foundation. All right. And so, you know, very good. Brother said, you know, he would try to bring them back to the scriptures. Right? That's what we should do. The Lord give you at that moment what to say, right? To try to help a brother or help a sister. You know? But you always, man, you, you never engage with someone that you don't know who they are. Because, you know, for a lot of reasons, the scriptures tell us, but for a lot of reasons, within the scripture, when you connect with somebody, you laying with somebody, you connect with their spirit. You flirting and carrying on, kissing on them, and they put hickeys on your kind of nasty business. I mean, let's come with it, man. They not dressed at the restaurant so you could just see what color clothes they got on. They, it's a plan here. He, I mean, the guy never brushed his teeth, but he didn't brush it that day. So he got a plan. Right? I mean, even old homeboys like, yo, I mean, what you this do? Right? And then once he gets control of the situation, he's going to show the girl that he's the Tasmanian devil. She going, what did I connect with now? The ghost face killer, McGillicuddy, and Batman put together. The Cape Crusader, this guy be busting capers. She got to check his phone. Where was you? Uh, Batman, he been running capers. Now she can't sleep. She's going through problems. 
Then, he, just like Batman, who remember how they spell when he used to punch people? Fit, boom, bam, fit. She's in the ER. Because she got the vet boom, bang from the Batman. This is what happens when we don't have, understand the scriptures. When a brother or a sister understands the scriptures, them kind of situations goes to the people that deserve those situations. And you escape punishment. You escape folly. You escape sorrow and unnecessary problems. But what happens is we go on by how a person looks. We lust it. What they say, any brother, that's the thing that irks me when a brother, well, you understand how a man's supposed to be according to these scriptures. And then you see the brothers out there. They putting on a show and be lying to the sisters. And then, then leave her with kids and all kinds of stuff. Like, what are we doing, man? There was a time when you, the, her brothers would beat your butt. There was a time when a shotgun came out. You ever try to mess with her, somebody's daughter? What they call the shotgun weddings. So society said we can't have it. We need promotion. We need to promote fornication. So they start to put in philosophies and certain things through the so-called church. Before we can get to music and media and movies, Hollywood, the first line of, of problems with, is where you don't expect it to come from. Them doctrines and them phony religions. This is why your biggest whoremongers and your biggest whores come out of them churches. Because of them doctrines. I ain't said that's the only reason. But I'm just saying. That's what, because... A whore or a whore manga, it don't matter whether they go to church or not. Let's keep it real. That's a choice. But I'm being I'm speaking specific if there's a doctrine or a few doctrines in place where you could just do whatever, but God is in your heart, that's the problem. And a lot of these brothers who have yet to learn how to be men according to God are laying with sisters. Defiling a nation, defiling a sister, bringing in kids. They got no vision of being a man. And then try to lie to themselves, I'm a man. Oh, why? Because I pay child support. That's not, listen, again, so we can be fair. That's not how it was meant to work. Let me say it at least like that. You're supposed to be in a life with your children and your wife where the children came from. Now, in a perfect world, according to the scripture, that's how it should work. You have to agree. But because we carnal, sold under sin, and we make choices that sometimes, I mean, you can't go back. So we deal with these issues. So now, what's the best way to move forward? Learn from those mistakes. Learn from them. Right? Brothers got to learn. Sisters got to learn. But when you see brothers not learning from those mistakes, and they keep getting with this woman, that woman, third woman, or sisters keep laying down with this guy, that guy, third guy, we're not learning. We're not learning. And then as you're getting older, you still operating in fear. And the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. So now... Because we're not learning from the original problem, which is fornication, that fear is kicking. Oh, I need to find somebody that's going to love me. I'm trying to find Mr. Right. Yeah, but you've been Mrs. Wrong all this time. So we're not learning. we got to learn. The Lord is the matchmaker. And a lot of times the Lord keeps you by yourself so you can learn about yourself. Then prayer adventure, according to his will, he has sent Mr. Right. And you know Mr. Right going to be about righteousness. So as much as I can say, because again, everything we say, we can't generalize. But it's definitely not where we can promote what's going on in our communities. Because that's out of order. A lot of business be going on. So let's finish. So we read uh, 
up into the 20th verse. Let's head to uh, Romans 12 and 1, down to 3. <coughs> Romans 12 and 1, down to 3. And um, in all praises to the Most High in Christ. For those that um, listening in on the internet, okay, you, you can just kind of hold your comments as the message is going out. Right. There's, there's different laws in the Bible that tell us how to deal when the scriptures is going out. Right? Say, Keep thy foot when I go into the house of the Lord. Right? Hold your tongue. Right? Phrases. It's not a thing of um, it's a thing of righteousness really. You just want to hold your peace because scriptures, I speak another one, it say let us be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rap. Okay, so let's let's learn something. Phrases. So let's just hold back on those comments on the internet. Let's get to Romans 12 and 1 down to 3. All praises. I know we got zeal, so we're not speaking against that. But we do want to do things decently in order. And so the spirit of the of the Messiah, Hamashiach, rose with us when we do things his way. We do things our way, the spirit leads. Christ ain't gonna hang around for that. If I just bust out, put the Bible away like this, and I just pull out a keyboard, and we just do 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 hey, 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 all that yelling, James Brown, and then we go person by person, let them stand up and give their testimony, and we're supposed to hear the testimony of the Christ. Right? I'm just giving an example. Christ left the room a long time ago, so we're doing our thing. All right, so we try and do the Lord's thing so his spirit would be with all of us. All praises. All right. Romans 12 and 1. Come on, brother. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brother, uh -huh. by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Okay, so a living sacrifice meaning if we're talking about the believers, we're alive. If we're talking about a sacrifice, a sacrifice is something that's killed. So what Paul did in the spirit was to say that sacrifice that is an offering or reverence to the Most High, but it's something that's killed, we're supposed to take at least that aspect in our living body. In other words, when you look at the rules on sacrifice back then, you couldn't just sacrifice any old kind of um, sacrifice. It's missing an eye or it's missing a foot, right? So he's saying be a living sacrifice. That 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 goat or that sheep or lamb, I should say, couldn't have blemish. So that's really the connection, the analogy he's making. Okay. Let the life we lead be blameless. And that's, that's a work within itself. You know, to be fair, that's a work for all of us, right? But it's both, that's the goal, though. We set the bar low, we ain't going to achieve anything. We set the bar high. That's what the scriptures always do. It helps us. Because the Lord trying to guide us to a certain destination. Right. All right. So we got to be a living sacrifice, meaning blameless, without blemish. And we got a lot of shortcomings. We got a lot of bad habits. Right? We got a lot. Of, some of us got bad triggers. Where we find is, you know, we cool until somebody hit that trigger. Then all of a sudden, what's that? You, who's that dude with the, you know, with the uh, he had the hat with the two guns, Yosemite Sam. He, ah, he's pulling, he ready to shoot for it. shoot folks, right? Now he shoot fog long, fog long leg on, and Sweetie mm -hmm. Bird, he shoot everybody. Somebody done hit that trick on. Right? So then, what does that mean? We got to be a living sacrifice. We got to kill that off. We got to let the Most High through Christ work a work in us so that 
When that trigger is hit, the devil can't use us. Okay, come on. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So that I like the way it's said because it's saying, by getting ourselves together in the Most High's Word, through the Messiah, Hamashiach, that's reasonable. What makes it reasonable? Because the Most High had Christ do all the work by giving us grace, dying on the cross for us. No greater love have any a man have that he give his life for his friends. Right? So the big work was done. So it's reasonable that we have a role in this. Try to do better, Israel. We got to try to do better. Right? Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world. Okay, so that's the better we got to do. Anything to die off or be sacrificed is to conform it. Be not conformed to this world. Why? What's the problem with the world? That the Most High don't want us to have a connection to. It's carnal. It's carnal. What else? Right? Right by the devil said the spirit that's in the, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's in Ephesians two. What are you gonna say? Friendship with the world is enmity with God. All right, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. That's James four and four. Okay, so there's a lot of problems with being in agreement with this world. Right, so. What does conforming mean before we go forward? To conform or what does that mean? Kind of both, there's two words in that one word. C-O-N, right? In Spanish, what does C-O-N mean? Huh? With, correct? You joined or with. And what does form mean? shape or pattern. So you're with that fashion. You're with that pattern. You're with that shape or form of the what? World. Don't do it. So don't be influenced. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world. Continue. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay. Trans means what? Transformer, transmission, right? Translucent. The term trans in front. What's that? Change. Right? So we got to be changed from the, the rudiments of this world by the renewing of our mind. What kind of mind are you talking about now? The spirit. The spirit or the mind of Christ, correct? You're right. Not the mind of this world. Go ahead. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when he say prove, what are you talking about? Argue with somebody. You know, they put the video, press record, and, and argue with Israel on the corner. That's the proving. Prove all things. Give me the scripture, brother. Read on. And the Lord said. You're a rotten rascal because you got pants on. That's what prove. That's what I mean. What's the proving? That's my original question. Is it mean proven to somebody else? Same question, just asked a different way. By the way you live your life, your actions. True. By the way you, the person, correct? Okay, that's what we're getting at. The proving is between you. And the, your creator, the Most High, through that advocate, Jesus Christ, Yahweh, or Yahashua, the Savior. That's what we got to understand. The proven is your lifestyle. You, the person, on how you're dealing with the Most High. Are you changing? That's all the Lord wants for us to change. You'll cover the rest. He just needs to see some effort, right? That's where grace comes in, in time of need. 
All right, read on. For I and say, so, uh, let me read that last part, the second verse. To prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we'll get a scripture in Thessalonians about the will of God. Right? I can speak on it, but that's me talking. Let the Bible speak for the Bible. And it'll tell us, it'll outline the will of God concerning man, concerning us. Go ahead. Verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So that third verse, remember how the Spirit always uses Paul. He'll say something in a verse, but what is he really saying? A lot of times how he gets down in his letters. He's repeating something he already said. He's repeating something he already said. He's just saying it a different way. So whatever he's saying in that third verse about being thinking more highly than we ought to think, making ourselves something we're not, most likely it's connected to the two verses he already said, correct? So okay, so here's the question. How are we how can a brother or sister in that third verse be thinking of himself more holy or righteous than he ought to think? Or making too much of himself? How would you answer answer that? presenting his body a living sacrifice. Very good. I was going to see if he used the wording. He's not changing. He's not killing off the old man. What else? You're right. He hasn't renewed his mind. He ain't renewed his mind. He ain't being transformed. So then what is he doing if he's not changing? He's conforming. So let's put it together. He gave us the formula. When we conforming, we being worldly. We're not changing and being renewed by the mind of Christ. We making a, making too much of ourselves. Now you see what's what's going on with these people out here. The spirit and vibration on these people. They don't even know how deep they in it, man. When we was out there, let's be honest, we didn't know. There's no way. The rum in the world know what the rum in, in Christ knows. The rum in the world, I didn't even know this world was that wicked. I had no clue. I didn't see some bad stuff. But I didn't know in its entirety that this world is a cesspool. But the rum that stopped being conforming into the world and start to be transformed by the renewing of the mind of Christ. Now I'm being taught. And now I'm seeing things for what it is. But when I was in my pride, I made myself more than I ought to think. Why do you think worldly people, a lot of times, they take these scriptures offensive? Because the rest of the world ain't telling them the way these scriptures tell them. The rest of the world is, the scripture says, the world loveth its own. He that is of the world heareth the world. They in agreement. But when them scriptures come out, wait, 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 what? Man, this dude talking about fornication. Like, that, that word is too big for them. Man, I was just trying to get my dude, fornication, right? Because it's over their head. You saying fornication, brother? I'm a Mac Daddy. Right? Making too much of himself. So is he going to repent as long as he got that mind? Until Christ show up. Now tell Christ what you've been saying. You know ain't nobody going to stand in front of Christ talking about, I'm a Mac Daddy. And how do we know ain't no one going to stand in front of him? I'm, I'm, I'm Iceberg Slim. I'm a Mac Daddy. How do we know? What do the scriptures indicate to us? That's right. Every knee going to bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When is this confession going to take place? At his second coming. What else going to be going on at his second coming? He's about to say. We're going to read about it today. 
It's going to be weeping, wailing, and gnashing the teeth, man. I guarantee, according to what these scriptures, and the scriptures ain't never been wrong, you ain't going to get one person talking trash when Christ show up. They do that now. They've been presented a false Christ that allows them to talk trash. But the Christ of these scriptures, they say the Lord is a man of war. You want to tell us that in Exodus 15? The Lord is a man of war, man. The vibration alone that he's coming with. Just think about how can I compare this? When you was younger, I don't know about these kids today, but when we was younger, some of the older generations, and you was cutting up in school. Right? And your day now your parents had to come to the school. You knew when they was up in that school, right? How did you know they was up in that school? Hmm? Now you waiting in the principal's office, but you knew when they showed up. Well, how did you know them? What indicated they was in the building? Some parents, all they had to do was just be in the room and give you that look. You knew you was in trouble. Just the look. My mama had a look. She just looked. My dad had a look too. That's it. You hear they voice. Where's my son? He's right here. Okay, what's going on? Oh, he was doing this. He was doing food fights in the lunchroom. He was just, and I'm sitting there. I'm just sinking. Him. <laughs> right? I'm dying. I'm like, man, because I already know she's smiling up in this office. Oh, thank you. He was doing what? Oh, okay. Right? And then she's looking at me. The smile go away. And I'm like, boom, 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 right? Now, I'm just made up the lunchroom thing, but <clears throat> I was doing other things. Not paying attention, being a class clown, with the class clown, stuff like that. But, um, oh, you knew you was in trouble. That's my point. You just knew it. And it was the longest walk to the house, I'm telling you. Long walk. I mean, it wasn't that far. But for a kid... Barely uh, three foot something high. Boy, that walk was long. And I'm going home telling my mama how much I love her. Oh, I'm trying everything. <laughs> mama, I'm going to tell you I love you. <laughs> She's like, yeah, okay. We're going to handle that. We're going to have that conversation when we get to the house. Right? I used to try everything. Anyway. So, again, I just said that to say, according to the scripture, when Christ shows up, ain't going to be none of that tough talk. Because the spirit of blindness and the spirit of rebellion and all that's taken away. Because the devil now, he's, his frequency is neutralized. He did his job. He's moving out the way. So now all that blindness is stripped away. All that defiance stripped away. Stubbornness stripped away. Idolatry, fornication. Now everybody going to see because we was created by the Christ to begin with. And everything's relative to righteousness now. The big evil is being dealt with so you ain't, you can't use them. He's going to destroy society. He ain't destroying the planet. He's going to destroy the society on the planet. And we got to answer. Lord forbid. Right. So the people of the world got to answer. Ain't going to be no, I'm Mac Daddy. All right. So the people during the time of the Maccabees, meaning the time of the, when Hanukkah was first instituted, you know, you had the righteous that stood up and they lost loved ones. They lost a lot of, they, they lost their homes. They had to flee their homes. Because a lot of sellout Israelites was diamond them out. And, and, and it was, you know, the devil was using the powers that be, which at that time was this wicked king called Antiochus. Right? He was of a Greek family. 
and he was oppressing the Holy Land. And he was putting his money and paying people off and, and, and making them live high on the hog to get these Israelites to, to sell out. And a lot of them sold out. See? Which the funny thing is, the very thing about the money, that's the thing that caused his downfall because his aim was to get the holy people to defile themselves when he had to work on their covetousness. When the money started running out, he went to go get more money by stealing and looting some other, like this Persian uh, fortress. And he got whooped. Right? So with the money running out everything, he had no military, no mercenaries, no nothing. Right? So now you're just an old fool. Right? A wicked fool. And he died a, 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 a skunk. Antiochus Epiphanes, commonly known as Antiochus IV. See, so this story resonates that you know you can't do wickedness and then expect not to get away. All right, and so uh, we was reading what that third verse. Let's read Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. Ecclesiastes in the Bible is near Proverbs. Eight, verse 11. Yeah, I want to get that, but I want to get this one first. Thank you. Because we got to focus on the will of God. What did he mean? Right? But Ecclesiastes speaks, I just kind of knew scripture popped up in my mind to go with the statements being made that people talk now people live their life the way they live it now and don't realize they have to answer for it. Right? And don't realize that the people that's agreeing with them or providing these false liberties or whatever have you, they can't save themselves at the second coming of the Christ, let alone save you. So we need to go with who can save us. And that's always been Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Or some may say Jesse Keith. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, right? Yahushua, Yahshua, Yahushua, right? And we know the Lord wanted this gospel to go into all languages, so that's why we got no problem saying his name, knowing that we preach in the Christ of the scriptures. A dark-skinned man with woolly hair who spake the words of the Most High. Right? So he removed the language barrier so we could learn the gospel. That's right. Being an Israelite means you got to learn the gospel. I don't know how I got separated, but you got to know your nationality. That ain't what he said. Knowing your nationality part of it, but how you, you need to know that gospel so you can repent. All right. So let's read it. Tell them where you're at. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11. Uh huh. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Okay, so because the Lord ain't showed his power, and he don't, he don't bring calamity right away, people think they could full steam ahead, like you say. Their heart is fully set in them to do evil. Read on. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, uh -huh. and his days be prolonged. Right, so so a lot of times in this society, some of the most wicked people be out living people. Go ahead. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Uh-huh, go ahead. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Because he feared not before God. Okay, so he's not getting away. It may seem like he's getting away. Right? Corrupt politicians, corrupt movie moguls, and Hollywood, and music industry, prison industry, law enforcement. Right? All these so-called organizations that hold some sort of power. 
got your ABC boys. However, if all whoever's in these groups doing wickedness, the Lord got it. So what about us, though? Especially us, his people. Especially the children of God. If we doing wickedness and think we ain't got to change and be transformed into the renewing of our mind. We being lulled to sleep. We falling into the trap because it will not go well with the wicked. Like the scripture says, it's an evil thing to depart from the living God, man. People who left the most high, talking about, I ain't going to be part of no faith. I'm going to serve the most high by myself out there, lying to themselves. It's a fearful thing to depart from the living God, man. Because the God of the scriptures don't say he's, selling, he's saving individuals. He's saving a nation. So if you got an individual doctrine tied to God, that ain't God. That is not the Mosaic. But you just revealed that you're your own God. Okay, so we got to be careful with this. Okay. I'm saying as a, as a nation, we got to be careful. All praises. So now let's head to Thessalonians. Fourth chapter. First Thessalonians 4 and 1. from the first verse to the 12 verse, okay? okay? First Thessalonians 4 and 1 down to 12. Lord, Lord. First Thessalonians 4 verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Okay, so right there he gave the job of the apostles. They were going around to the scattered Israelites, right? Whether they were in the synagogue or they go house to house, wherever they were going. And they were teaching them how they ought to walk concerning how to please God. Scriptural. To please God means scriptural. Right? Go ahead. Second verse. For ye know what commandments What we commandments? Gave. What scriptures? Go ahead. We gave you by the Lord Jesus. Okay, so that right there, are the commandments done away? Just by that second verse. They got doctrine. The law is done away. And what's this talking about? So are there commandments under the new covenant? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, how do we know? He just said it, right? Okay, read it again. So you, all oh, y'all are correct. I just ask, sometimes I ask the same question to get it to resonate. But go ahead, read it again, brother. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. So that says a lot. That tells you the doctrine they was teaching, correct? Yes. What were they teaching the people? The commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, what's well, some of the commandments of Christ? Is it sacrifice of animals? No, that's the old covenant. But what does Christ teach us, though? When it comes to sacrifice under the new covenant. We read it today. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That's one of the commandments. So you no longer... An animal die in your place, and then you... No, you got to be that living sacrifice because Christ already died for us. So it's your reasonable service to play your role in this and try to do better by those commandments. There has to be a reference point, something to go by, and it's the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh, right? You got the communion, that's a commandment. You got the uh, Ten Commandments. You got the dietary law. You got to love thy neighbors thyself, right? You got certain dress codes. Women are not to wear that which pertaineth to a man. Man not to wear that which pertaineth unto a woman, right? Those are simple commandments. 
with society cloud the issue at first. Not, but the clouding of the issue was to get you to a certain destination. Now all the women wear pants, even up in the church. But they had to cloud it first. Right? So a lot of that, when it was being taught, you had a lot of some of the older generation sisters. They wasn't going to do it. But the younger ones was ready to do it. Because society comes at the younger generation. Try to shape and mold their minds. Right? The cover, when the sisters got to cover their head. When the scriptures is going on or when there's praying going on. Or anything involving the most high in Christ. Right? Praying and prophesying. The older sisters understood it. The younger sisters, not only they head uncovered, they in there with pants and the pastor. No head covering. Pants on. And you the pastor. Again, you know when we teach is to bring out facts, not to condemn. All right? Because the scripts say we don't know as we ought to know. But I'm just trying to give the, the example. Society clouded it first. And once they can get knock you off your base, where you start doubting the belief system, or your belief system is doubtful, you know what it's saying, Corinthians, but maybe you don't really say that. That's how they get you through their theologian schools. And so these black ministers go to these theologian schools, Hispanic ministers, Israelites, our people, go to the learn our Bible from another nation. Yeah, that's going to work. And when they learn these, these trick doctrines, they bring it back. They get a PhD, so now maybe that makes him more worthy to listen to. And he's fully indoctrinated with lies. Things that are a plot and a scheme, he just doesn't know it. It's a plot and a scheme to, to destroy him, the nation, the family structure, everything. That's what it's for. And through gradualism, you just start to see. Maybe it, maybe it do say that. Maybe it do say I could, uh, you know. And so the men start to act a certain way. The women start to act the reverse way. The deacon, who also on the choir, or the deacon board, he start acting effeminate. The woman start being the, the masculine and the masculine male. She running the church. It's out of order. But it's what the Baphomet, it's what the devil wants. They just don't see it. They don't want to see it. They know what it say, but somehow it doesn't mean it. Once I see people do that, what's that say, brother? Uh, the woman, the man shall not wear that which pertains to a man, a woman, a woman not to wear that which pertains. What's that mean? Well, see, God is love. Okay. Next. Already. See, we dancing. God is love, but God is truth. And in truth, truth is love. What does it mean, brother? See, there you go again. Okay. Playing again. Strike two. Now, I got to be doing something wrong. Before you finish your sentence, let me stop you. Because you don't said, there I go again. So, I got to be doing something wrong. For that scripture not to mean what it means. We can do this all day, brother. Because there's a spirit where the Lord say, don't meditate what you say. But in that hour, he will give you what you say. He will be that mouth that neither your adversaries can gain, say, nor resist. You ain't out enduring the most high spirit through the Christ. No way. But got to go to personal tax, slander, you already know that ain't the Lord. All right, come on. Verse 3. <coughs> uh, this is the will of God. All right, so he done talked about commandments in the first two verses. So he said, this is the will of God, come on. 
even your sanct sanctification. Meaning your cleansing. There's a lot of things that we got to learn and be purged. That's what say, let the Lord work that work in us. Go ahead. That ye should abstain from fornication. Now that's part of the will. Right? So he spoke about the commandments in general, but then he picked one of them. It is the will of God to keep the commandments, like abstaining from fornication. What is fornication? Unlawful sexual acts, unlawful sexual unions. Now, according to the Bible, not according to society, but according to the Bible, the most I created male and female and blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. So the blessing was the sanctity of marriage, right? That's how you multiply. You just multiply any old kind of way. Right, so when he created mankind, he created the creation before that, you had the animals reproducing. Right? The lion sees the lioness, lays with that, lays with another one, lays with another one. But when it comes to mankind, there's an order how a man gonna be with his woman. Marriage. He just be any old kind of way. You see? And so some of the things the Bible calls fornication is like being promiscuous, like whoredom, being a whoremonger and a whore and a whore. That's that's one. Also, you got where men with men, women with women. That's fornication, right? Then you also got bestiality. That's fornication. Then you got incest. That's fornication. Then you got where the scriptures speak about Israel marrying outside of their nation. That's fornication. And on and on and on besides spiritual fornication, which is what? What's spiritual fornication? Idolatry. Idolatry. Because the Most High is set up in a symbolic way his connection to the people of the Most High. That's like a union. A marriage is a union. So for Israel to go after other gods, Jeremiah 3 and 20 say, that's like a woman who does, uh, treacherously departs from her husband. That's spiritual fornication. Right? Like a lot of our people who don't know better, just like we was out there around this time in December, we was fornicating spiritually and physically when it comes to some Christmas. Right? Because that's the so-called time when you're in the Christmas spirit. Quote unquote. And what is this Christmas spirit? Idols, right? False gods tied to it. And in the Bible, you, you you know it ain't in the Bible. Right? So then we dealing with stuff that's not substantiated by scripture, but we attaching Christ's name to it. That's another God, man. And so what goes on in this Christmas? Oh, mistletoe and Eggnog, it was more rum than eggnog, but it's, it's yeah, eggnog. And we drunk and we and we ready to fornicate physically. Right. A lot of babies been uh, hatched or, or initiated come from some Christmas party. A lot of fornication. Right? Because that's part of this world's um, festival stuff. Right? to fornicate, to defile yourself. That's how they get down. Because that's what those demons or the gods, demons, not gods, but demons, tied to these things, that's the influence of these, these celebrations. To defile yourself, to spite God. That's what it's for. But the people don't understand it because they lust it, so they think it's something great. They in favor of it, not realizing you're being sabotaged. The devil wants to defile your body and your spirit so that you can be destroyed at the second coming of Christ. That's why I said when Christ shows up, the devil moves out the way because he did his job. And then who's left holding the bag? Mankind. All right. And so let's read. So part of the will of God is for you to be sanctified, Israel. Cleanse and purge from bad things, corrupt things. The old man, the old woman. 
and that you should abstain from fornication, unlawful sexual acts, unlawful sexual unions. Four verse. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel uh -huh. in sanctification and honor. So your vessel means your mind, body, and spirit. It goes with Corinthians 6. But Corinthians 6 says flee fornication because we're supposed to glorify God in our body and in our spirit. So that's what your vessel is. It ain't just your body. It's your spirit, first and foremost. So that's part of the will of God. And you should, so why, when he said you should know how to possess or control yourself, it's based on the verses before that. You was taught. Just like in this church, right? We say this church meaning two things. Specifically the church here located in the Boston region, right? It's really Brockton. But we say the Boston region, right? A few miles outside of Boston. We've taught marriage, and we've spake against fornication. We've taught against the scripture. I mean, against the uh, fornication, like the scriptures say. And the second part of that, we've taught brothers and sisters on a on a larger scale outside of this church, the physical found, uh, foundations of this church, the same message: to abstain from fornication, to follow the scriptures. That's what I meant to say. Not against the scripture. Follow the scripture. Don't break the scripture. So it's not where a brother can say we didn't know. And that's where Paul is coming from. You was taught. So it's on you now to perform. So if you keep making the same mistakes, it's not that the Lord didn't show you. It's now we got to take a closer look at do we really want to change? So if we really want to change, you're going to make you're going to do a lot of things differently. You're going to cut off <clears throat> cut off certain connections. Excuse me. You're going to cut off a certain type of behavior, certain <clears throat> habits. You're going to really like be prayed up. And the Lord will open that whole thing to you. Unlock that whole thing where it was you thought you could never change, but because you took the faith to try, the Lord make your way so you can change. The devil doesn't want you to know that. He wants you to think changing is so difficult. Oh, it's so difficult. It can never be done. I'm back in the hotel with the, with the girl. Stop that. It can be done. They said that Christ dealt with the woman who was a harlot and she had seven demons in her, man. Since she had seven spirits in her, Mary Magdalene. She changed. What do you think them spirits was telling her to do? To lust and fornicate and defile herself. Okay, so she could change. All right, read on. <clears throat> Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Okay, so concupiscence is a type of lust, but it's specific to fornication. Right? So not in the lust of concupiscence. Right? And it's funny you got a term cupid. But concupiscence, it's like you're lusting, but it's not so much you're lusting after money or power or fame. You're lusting after fornication to defile yourself. So not in that spirit, like the way our people in that Gentile state of mind is doing. Right? I mean, Gentiles is first foremost your people who's acting like the Gentile. We can't be like them, because that's how the nations get them. And our people doing those things, they're copying the nations, the Gentiles. That's how they get them. Their normal life means your daughter should defile herself before she's with her husband. At least three to four times. At least. You go to formals. You go to proms. Right? Then from there she goes to college. And what's done in college is like Vegas. Keep it there. Don't tell nobody. So they normalize fornication. 
before she even, oh, I'm settling down. What does settle down mean? The way they explained it to us. It don't even make sense. So if you're settling down now, what was you doing the opposite of settling before that? What's the opposite of settling down? Ramping it up. That when they got songs like that? After that, I said ramp it up. They got another way they say, um, yeah, I'm turning it up. I'm turning it all the way up. Right? Don't they got a song like that? All the way up. Right. Right. Now, you know, I be late to these songs, so people be laughing at me. I'm in 2022. When did that song come out? But I be late to because it's, it's, it's not for me, man. I could care less. I saw it. These fools is boasting. I'm turning it all the way up. Okay, brother. In the heat, it's going to be turned all the way up. Yeah. Hey, Christ's second coming. So we got to repent. So that lust, and that's where the porn comes in. That's where these commercials and these movies. But a movie could be about toothpicks, but somebody's getting butt naked in a closet. Somebody's grabbing on each other and they ripping each other's clothes. What's the name of the movie? Oh, The, the Revenge of the Toothpicks. Well, what do they got to do with what this dude doing in the closet? Because that's what that's how Hollywood get down. They need to keep that, like, sow seeds in your spirit. So even if you ain't thinking about that stuff, the damage is already done in your subconscious. There's certain things as children we never knew about. But guess who showed it to us first before our parents could explain not to do it and behave outside? These movies and this music and every other thing. They want to teach your children some sex education. From a profane fornicator? Yeah. Get on out of here with that. Esau, the profane fornicator. We did a class on it. I'll probably reshare the thing. You're going to teach your children how to do something, get out of here. There's no sex education. That instruction comes from the parents in the proper time, depending on the type of child. You got a hot child, that's just, you got to deal with it. Child think they grown more than, faster than the time. You deal with them differently than the child that more into their toys. So it's a game being ran on. These children are entertaining adult themes and adult situations before the time. So you actually grooming them and putting them in a bad spot. And when you put these kids in a bad spot, being the, the immature child that it is, they're going to end up defiling themselves. They're going to end up in situations that they can't take back. Right? So nobody talks about that. Why do you think in Hollywood or even in the music industry, these people are not happy? Why do you think they be addicts, drug addicts, alcoholics? What are they trying to suppress? Ask that question. They got all the money in the world. Cars, they got 12 bathrooms. I ain't even got 12 rooms. They got 12 bathrooms. But they're addicts, sex addicts, drug addicts, right? The alcoholics, because they did a lot of things. Where the devil painted a certain picture and told them it was that, like this and like that. When really, once they entertained it, they sold their soul. Now they're trying to find their soul. They're trying to suppress the evil that they got tricked into. Some of them go blindly into it, don't realize. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean orgy stuff going on? Yeah, I'm down with that. You sure about that, brother? See, you started out and you was trying to be about the ladies. You, you really know what you're talking about them orgies? You're going to find out. And then he gets all the demons that's in them people because he defiled it. Now he's trying to figure out how to turn it off. So now he's messing with drugs and drinking up. So a lot of them be jacked up. Man. It's not worth it. And guess what? There is a way out. There always was a way out. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said the truth shall make you free, man. There's, as long as there's breath in someone's body, there's always 
room for repentance is when we unrepent it and time runs out. When we're making excuses. When we hating God for the things we did wrong. You ain't never going to get repaired, man. And the devil wants you to think that. He wants you to think you can never be repaired. You can be repaired. And the road to recovery is not an easy one, but it is at least a road to freedom, to free your mind and your spirit. You are not to be in bondage to sin. The Lord died on that cross for that very reason, to free you from the guilt and the regrets and everything that came with the trickery of the sin. That's why this word is in every language, to reach his people throughout the world, to let us know the devil can't hold us. You understand? <laughs> All right, so let's get busy, man. Let's repent. Let's rock and roll. Let's roll. You know what I mean? Let's let's get busy. In the Christ that died for us, he's in favor of us to show us the way to follow. All praises. All right, let's read on. We got a lot to be thankful for, man. Not for the depression and all that, man. We live it. We breathe it. And we got a God that has never forgotten us, man. We got a devil that says you're the worst person in the world. We got a God that says you're the greatest. you so great. I sent my son to die for you. That's what I feel about you. Now be great. Come on. Verse 6. <laughs> that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. So that's another commandment they taught them. Don't do your brother wrong. Don't do your sister wrong. Go ahead. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, mm -hmm. as we also have forewarned you and testified. Mm -hmm. Come on. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Okay, so you see, fornication is uncleanness. Dealing, doing your brother wrong is uncleanness. Doing your sister wrong is uncleanness. Go ahead. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man. Uh huh. But God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Okay, so understand when these commandments come out, if any man got a problem with it, you're not despising the message, the messenger. You're despising the message from who it came from. You're despising God. Okay, he the one don't want you to defile yourself. He the one want you to deal right with your brother, not injure your brother, not disrespect your sister. This, we got a lot of things we got to learn, man. We walking in a society with complete inappropriate behavior. But we want results. And all we're going to get out is what we put into it. you dealing in ungodliness and you don't even know how to operate. The Israelite man and the Israelite woman don't even know how to operate as a person in this world. That is true to say. We be saying and doing things dead wrong. And what makes it worse, in our ignorance, we have no clue that how wrong we are. The Lord knew that, man. And that's why he sent the Christ to die for us. So that we can wait. he can give us that truth to free us from the bondage of sin, man. Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the devil loves to keep the people in a sinful environment. This is why they got to make people who follow the Bible make it look like we crazy. Go ahead. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. You see that? Because why Why you say ye need not that I write unto you? It goes with the earlier verses. As touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. Why is he saying that? Because I already know what commandments. Right. It was a constant message that was already taught. Just like here. We got to learn that love. And the love is a process. And what does society teach us? The opposite. Love yourself. What does the Bible teach us? Which society is funny. Loving yourself really means hate yourself. But <laughs> what the Bible teaches, love thy neighbor as thyself. Esteem others better than yourself. Think about others. There's times you're making sacrifices. For other people. That's Christ-like. Right? We're in the world. You ain't doing that. You looking out for you. 
But as we're transforming the renewing of our minds, we on a whole nother frequency, man. We operate completely different. We start to learn these things. And we start to operate in a way where we surprise ourselves because when we was in that world, we weren't even thinking like this. Right? All praises. And that's that transforming. Right? Letting Christ renew our mind. It's a lifelong process, Israel. I laugh when people say, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You say, how you saved Christ and came back yet? Oh, you know what I mean. Uh, hold on. I, I I know what you think you mean. Right? But he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So you have the right idea. But truth be told, the scripture you quite trying to quote, it speaks of an endurance. It speaks of a proving. Right? Repenting daily. Whether Christ come in your lifetime or not, you was about it. Your name is putting on that list. Your name is written in the book of life. It wasn't mentioned a book of life. It was no book of life. So your names are written in heaven, man. That at the coming of the Christ, he's with us. That's how the Lord see it. And the rest of these people out here, fire. All right, read on. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Okay, so the message never came from them first. It, it came from God. Excuse me. The Most High is about loving one another. Right? Go ahead. And indeed, ye do it for <coughs> all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that mm -hmm. ye increase much, that ye increase more and more. Look at that. So you had, where's Macedonia? What's that talking about? All right? That was a region in Greece. All right? So you had synagogues and, 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 and Thessalonica. All right? That's part of Greece. All right? Ain't it? Like Macedonia, all that, all them areas. All right? So you have brothers over there. Right. Go ahead. And that ye study to be quiet. Study and do what now? To be quiet. Go tell on the mountaintop. Nah, remember the scripture say there's a time and season for everything, right? So there's a time to learn first. Before we go tell another man. Hey sister, what you doing with pants on? And she come back and say, hey brother. What you doing five minutes in the truth trying to tell me something? Alright? That's what brothers do. Right? Or they get so happy they want to just go tell, right? And you can come off judgmental. Okay. Learn from Christ. He knew the fitting scripture and how to apply with each man and how he talked to him. He never condoned sin, but he knew how to talk with him. Right? He never attacked the 116 things a man could do. Remember, he could read our minds. He knew everything about us. He created us. That's why it's funny he created, he made the uh, water into wine. Well, guess what? He the one created, he knows how to make the wine and the water and the grapes. Right? The leaves on the grape tree, the grapevine, excuse me. So that's not a hard thing to turn water into wine. But yet when he dealt with mankind, he knew what was fitting to say, to encourage repentance. And that's what we learn. So we have to study to be quiet, right? Go ahead. And to do your own business. Get busy, man. There's a difference between somebody busy or a busy body. It's a difference. Right? So we got to get busy, man. In other words, we got to, you know, there's a, there's a certain quiet, determined zeal or work that we have to do. Where we're changing, we're growing. With brothers that's married and got children, we moving as a block. Right. And we should be increasing in the knowledge, not going backwards. Husbands, wives, children, we not to go backwards. Right. All right. So the so 
Read on. Go ahead. And to work with your own hand. Uh huh. As we commanded you. Okay, so now you're talking about it comes that order of providing and you know being responsible. Go ahead. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. Who's those that are without? Who's that? What's that talking about? Those that are without. What's that talking about? People in the world. Correct. How should we be presenting ourselves to the people who don't know this faith? Remember, we represent something, and it ain't you. Always remember that. So we to walk honestly toward them that are without. When they see us, they hear scripture, but they should see scripture. When they see you, or they see your wife, or they see your children, we're supposed to have an honest report now. But if it come out that we doing the same things they doing, then there's an inadvertent subconscious message that's being sent. Why should I repent when the people that supposedly follow that Bible do the same thing I do or worse? And I'm sorry to say that be true sometimes. Some of the worst people be the ones with the Bible. Some of the worst things that I've witnessed been some of the business going on up in this church. Over the years, right? Well, I haven't I haven't heard of stories like that from people in the world, but I've witnessed things that went on in this faith, so called, by people who gave this faith a bad name. Let's let's make the distinction, right? You know, rotten apples. Right? You say the brother did what? The sister did what? And can cause people that are without to blaspheme the name of God by ungodly actions of the people that are supposed to be in the faith. So that's why that's part of the commandments, Israel. That's why we read to the 12th verse. It ain't just the fornication part. It's having a good and honest report. No story should be coming back where it's going to injure, or I should say, make God look bad. Make Christ look bad. Shouldn't come back for us as men. Shouldn't be going down for our wives, for our children. All right. So that means men have to learn what the Bible has us prepared for us to learn how to be men and, and fulfill that position. Sisters have to learn that position of being a female, right? Whether single, leading up into a marriage. Once a sister's married, she has to learn how to cook, clean, bear the children, guide the house. There's no option, right? There's no time out. Well, I did all that. I'm done. What scripture is that? That means you're not a woman anymore. That's you telling the Lord, right? Look what society's telling. Look, the society's telling our sisters. All you got to do is they tell them woman represents how you look. That's why it's all about their nails, their hair sensuality right when the scriptures speak about a woman that feared the Lord right? a, a beautiful woman right I'm quoting two different scriptures but a woman that feared the Lord that's Proverbs 31 she shall be praised right for her works then the other scripture I was quoting where it says it's a double blessing is the beautiful woman that's about the scriptures but society says no just be a beautiful woman don't be about the scriptures. Disrespect men. Disrespect your husband. Pick and choose when you're going to be a wife. This is madness. Right? And then you're seeing brothers with pink shirts on pushing strollers. Right? Like they soccer moms. It's out of order. And they try to shame you for, for calling out their reverse role business. That ain't the scriptures. Me taking my child to a soccer game, right? Like I'm somebody's mother. Hold on, that's out of order, brother. <laughs> but that's how they presenting it, right? 
and they want the brothers to be effeminate because that's the only way that they're going to accept you in society. Look at look at Hollywood. Every time they show the brothers in the movies, <clears throat> the brother is a feminine. Everybody else can have a masculine role, but not the black man. He has to be buck broken on that camera. That's they telling you how they feel about you. This ain't 1916 Arkansas. They telling you in modern time, when they put their movies out, you always the first one getting killed. Look at them Wakanda movies. The, the, and I'm laughing because I, I, I was checking with it was a brother describing the same thing I was already feeling. So when I seen it, Black Panther Part 1, Black Panther Part 2, same problem. You present, projecting out like this, this superhero, some fictitious African uh, kingdom. But you ain't really doing that. You sucking brothers in for what you're really trying to push. And if you pay attention to that whole thing, guess who been dying? The black so-called alpha male. The Black Panther's father, he died first. Well, actually, his uncle died first. Then he died, get the explosion. Then the Chachala dude, the, the prince, he becomes the king. He gonna kill the African American version of the, of the alpha male. They call him Killmonger. They had the dude, the dude played uh, Killmonger. Michael B. Jordan, whatever. So you got to kill that and make him so out of order and over the top. Kill him, right? So look who's really dying in their movies. Yet, who's the one helping Wakanda? The dude who played Bilbo Baggins from uh, uh, that same character, the Edomite. And what's his role in the movie? What was he, who did he play? The water boy? What was his role in the movie? Y'all remember the movie? They know that home. <laughs> the, the Edomite, he, what did he play in the movie? What was his role? I'm being facetious. He, I know he won the water boy. Right? Part of the, one of the ABC boys, right? I know you don't watch the movies anyway. Right? He was part of one of the ABC boys. Right? He was part of the CIA. Now, the CIA been killing the brothers. Why have they been helping the brothers? They behind the COINTEL program. Killing the alpha males. So the movie put it out backwards. So it could be in your mind. The strong black male, you got to die. So then, what happens in part two? Who they give it over to? They couldn't even give it to Angela Bassett, the, the older, more experienced sister. They gave it to a young girl. Who didn't know if she was coming or going. Because that was the aim of the thing to begin with, man. Yeah, but that's how they did it in the comic books. Exactly, comedy. You don't understand that that Hollywood is against what we truly represent. They cannot put what the Bible say we're supposed to represent with the strong Israelite man with his wife with him. And he leading the house in what Christ teaching. That's a no-no. So they're killing off these brothers, and then they got the sister. She's the black, the next Black Panther. I probably messed it up if you want to see the movie, but I don't care. It's garbage, right? And they're getting whooped by who? I'm telling the movie, don't care. What is the new thing they injected in this part two? The Mexicans beating up on the blacks. 
when we know the Mexicans and the blacks are Israelites. So now what they putting in your subconscious? You see, it was terrible, man. It was terrible how they do us. And that whole part two, they got destroyed. You see, out of order. Out of order, man. So read that 12 verse again. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. Okay, we got we to gotta represent the Father in Christ when it comes to people that don't know better. Go ahead. And that ye may have lack of nothing. So that we can lack nothing from the Most High spiritually. All praises. So we got to really just be careful of uh, what we're doing. Okay. And uh, the rejoicing thing is that, um, you know, there was always in each generation brothers and sisters that had a certain fortitude, meaning strength. And they were not going to bow down. And they was going to always love the Most High, love Christ. And that's what Hanukkah is about, the Feast of the Dedication. So let's end with two scriptures. 2 Maccabees 10. Second Maccabees 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the brother. The brother right on that. Black Panther 1 was black on black crime. And Black Panther 2 was black on brown crime. Mm. They saw in Discord, man. It's out of line, bro. So 2 Maccabees. And it's funny when the brother, you know, as I've seen the brother saying these things, he really taking it to heart like, man, Hollywood did us like that. I'm saying, brother, it's a movie. The, the dangerous part is the part you're referring to, the symbolism behind it. But you upset like the solution is do the movie this way. No, the solution, we getting out of here. Ain't going to be nobody's movie other than, like I say, the, the revolution will not be televised. We could care less about somebody's movie. We want the world. And we get the world because Christ is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Ain't going to be no movie. Ain't going to be no do the movie the right way. It's going to be reality. And every day going to be Psalms 149. That's your movie. Psalm 149 in that kingdom. Where we're going to sing aloud upon our beds with a two-edged sword in our hand. All praise. We correct nobody's movie. We're going to correct somebody's butt. Kingdom gonna be a kingdom in righteousness, man. So the brother, you know, complaining like they need to move, do the movie right. I'm like this brother, that's the problem. You hitting on it, then you say that something stupid like that. All right? And this is a brother I say, you know, because he he want to always put his foot in his mouth. He won't talk that blackness. Brother, stop. The second Maccabees ten. And let's read from the first verse to the tenth verse. Come on. <coughs> Second Maccabees 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now Maccabeus and his company, the Lord guiding them, uh -huh. recovered the temple and the city. So this was a thing of the Lord. The Lord was behind this whole mercy and deliverance. Continue. But the altars which the heathen had built built in the open sit, open street and also the chapels they pulled down mm -hmm. and having cleansed the temple they made another altar and striking stones they took fire out of them mm -hmm. and offered a sacrifice after two years and set forth incense and lights and children mm -hmm. so they, they had to gut the, thing, gut the place and rededicate the whole temple because the heathen profaned it three years earlier. Go ahead. When that was done, they fell flat down and besought the Lord that they might come no more into such trouble. Uh -huh. 
But if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten, chasten them with mercy, mm -hmm. and that they might not be delivered unto the blasphemous and barbarous nation. Okay. So they was referring to how they acknowledged that these evil things are happening because we messed up. And that Lord have mercy upon us that it never happens again to this level. Go ahead. Now upon the same day that the strangers <coughs> profaned the temple, mm -hmm. on the very same day it was cleansed again, mm -hmm. even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is Kassel. Right, so that was the that was the real like significance of it. That they even thought they were doing something three years earlier. And then three years later to the exact date, the tides turned. And we were able to get Judea back and get the temple back and shut the heathen down, man. And rededicate the temple, the altar, the temple, and so forth. Go ahead. And they kept eight days with gladness, as in the feast of the tabernacle, mm -hmm. remembering that not long before they had held the feast of the tabernacle, when as they wandered in the mountains and dens like bees. Mm -hmm. So that's where the eight days of Hanukkah come from. It comes from Leviticus 23, where they fashioned it like the Feast of Tabernacles. The eight day Lent, where the first day and the eighth day are Sabbaths. Go ahead. Therefore they bear branches and bear bows and palms also, and sang songs unto him that had given them good success in cleansing his place. Okay, so that's also because in the Feast of Tabernacles was around the seventh month. A lot of us will try to, you know, do the um, the tents and the different things as a memorial for how the Lord did us, right? And so they kept that part of it as well. All praises. Right? Now, it is wintertime, but <laughs> they was living in dens and, and in caves anyway. Right? Okay. I'm sure y'all ready to go out in the tent. Right? Raise your hand. One brother. Two brothers. <laughs> kind of slow there, bro. He got his coat on in the, in the church. You ready? <laughs> you ready to go to the tent? <laughs> I'm messing with you. He said, yeah. All right. Okay. Y'all yeah, mess with the brothers. But we get, usually all pray that we get the uh, fire pit going. My brother in the back, he be hooking it up. Hey, right, Buck? Crazy. He's hooking it up, man. A few other brothers open up their whole yard. And got some land there and all that. We got a good group up here, man. All praise. That's the Lord's mercy. And so they kept it like the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's also in the scriptures. And I'm sure if we wanted to, we can do that as well. Right? We only got one mild day. But it was rainy, like close to 60 degrees, but it wasn't going to work. But uh, I'm sure the sisters will be ready if the brothers do it. Real quiet there, huh? I'm joking. So go ahead, seven verse. Therefore they bear branches and fair bows and uh, palms also. Look at that. And sing psalms unto him. That had given them good success in cleansing his Look place. Look at that. So they memorialized the, to the Most High. That the Lord gave them good success, man. You see what happens? You just stay strong. So for three years, it didn't look well. For well, two years and change, it didn't look well. But they stayed strong. And then that third year, on the very day, the Most High broke it. They broke through. All praises. Go ahead. They ordained also by a common statue and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. All praises. Come on. And this was the end of Antiochus called Epiphany. He was the culprit behind the oppression. This particular Greek king, he was oppressing our holy land. And he purposely defiled our temple, brought in harlots and everything. They were dealing in the false gods, the Bacchus, and all that. Which they called the Bacchanalia. Right along with the Saturnalia. All that wickedness. Right? Go ahead. 
Now will we declare the acts of Antiochus Eupater. That was his son, go ahead. Who was the son of this wicked man, gathering briefly the calamities of the war. Right, so his son didn't rule that long. But we get the point. He was the son of this what? Wicked man. This Antiochus was wicked. But the Lord delivered us. All praises. And that's always we have to remember that because <clears throat> when we get into our things of adversity, we have to already be built. We have to already, there has to be a spirit within us that we ready. That way, whatever life brings us, we can make those we can make those decisions wholeheartedly because it's already in us. Just like these brothers and sisters. They stood up for the most high. They didn't know they had to leave their home because the enemy wasn't going to allow them to stay in the scriptures and represent God. They were trying to make a point and eradicate those who follow God. So it came to that for these brothers and sisters. Right? And they stayed, they still, they stood strong and they held their, they held court like they say. And the most high blessed them for it. And that's a good story for us. Don't conform. Don't. Not for anybody. Not for the severity of the situation. Do not conform. Christ said, Fear not him that can destroy your body, but fear him that can destroy both body and spirit. That's Christ at the second coming, man. A lot of people are going to be wiped out of existence. All right, Israel. So all praises to the Most High in Christ for that. And uh, let's give the Most High in Christ a hand, man. Praise. Praise. All right. So with that said, let's do the prayer. We'll end with the prayer, right? Then we'll do the Lord's communion. And we'll make any several announcements. All praises. And so... Uh, Let's do the prayer. All right, that's right. Big turn out, all praise. Let's meditate in prayer. Most high in the name of Christ, thank you for our family, the family of saints here and scattered abroad, that we're together, one body, one spirit, according to your mercy. And in these last days, thou gave us a light that we may rejoice and that there is a God in all heaven and earth, and that thou shalt be our God and we shall be thy people through the blessings and through the mercies of the Christ dying on the cross for us. All praises to the Most High in the name of Christ who could never be praised enough, and bless us in these last days, protect us, guide us, heal us, and make us whole. Remember your covenant and save us and destroy the enemy and their devices. All praises to the Most High in the name of Christ. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Well, bear with us. We're going to get the bread and wine ready. Amen. For those at home can do it with us.
talking about, bro. All right, so while they get still preparing, I'll read the scripture of why we observe the Lord's communion as a commandment. So I'll read Acts 2. And read about the church that was built on the Christ. Christ built on a church, not a camp. Under Moses, we was a camp. Under Christ, we a church. Okay? And even in Moses, we was a church that was in the wilderness. But Yahweh Shai, the Christ built on a church, not a camp with old ranks that was under the term, under Moses' God. We're not under Moses, we're under Yahweh Shai. Uh, these Israelite groups doing old stuff because it provides for them to promote themselves. They're not Moses, they're not Christ. So Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So that showed you the continuing of the, the church that Christ is building, the Father through the Christ, there's a doctrine in place. But notice it said doctrine singular. Right? Which is another just another way of saying the gospel. Right? Isaiah preached the gospel. Moses preached the gospel. Jeremiah. They all preached of the coming of the Messiah to die for Israel and that Israel needed to repent. That's the doctrine. So by the time the apostles came, it was not a doctrine of the apostles, but it was a doctrine that the apostles taught. That's what's called the apostles' doctrine. It's the gospel. That Christ commissioned them to preach. And so the fellowship was based on the doctrine. That's why a lot of these groups fail is because the doctrine ain't right. That's why it's not true fellowship. Right? So we're trying to learn that, Israel. Right? True fellowship based on the doctrine. Right? And in breaking of bread, that's the key that stands out they were doing the Lord's communion because the Lord instituted it in Matthew 26 before he died. And in prayers, right? The family and church that pray together stay together and never give up hope on one another and always think about others. Right? And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Look at that. And all that believed were together. Hold on for one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, buddy. All right. They sent him to the oven. He in good hands. Mm -hmm. All right. So it says, and all that believe were together and had all things common, right? So if we believe, then we should be what? We just read it. And all that believe were what? Together, meaning together in mind, body, spirit. Looking out for one another, checking on people, checking on one another, right? Caring about others, right? So you have to learn that naturally. Remember, society teaches us to be in our own world, right? So in the faith, we can't be like them. Remember, Christ said, you're not of the world. I've chosen you out of that world. So you learn to think about others. Somebody's sick, call them, check on them. Somebody needs something, right? If you, if you have the power to help, right? If it's not in your power, then we're going to try to see that who can. But, you know, at least you're trying or you're checking. You don't have to just be when someone's sick, right? Just... Staying together, checking on one another. And they problems is your problems. Right? You say, hey, brother, you know what's going on, man? I'm trying to deal with this and this and that. And, you know, I'm trying to renew this license and such and such and blah, blah, blah. They give me problems. Oh, okay, brother. We're going to pray for it. What seemed to be the problem? Or this and that, blah, blah, blah. Right? All right, pray for me, man, that they, you know, this thing go through. All right, I'll praise it. A week later, hey, man, did it go through? What goes on? The thing we saw, oh, yeah, man, so, man, I'm glad you called it. Right? 
So that just kind of show that you care. Where he done forgot, you remember. I've seen that before. Right? He didn't, what are you talking about? Remember the thing you was Oh, yeah, man, let me tell you, brothers. Brother, right? All praises. And you rejoicing together with him or with her. Right? This is, so now there's a level of where we share in each other's lives. That's what friends and family do. Not be antisocial and, well, no, when you talk to the sisters, make sure you don't say this and make sure you don't say that. What are we doing? So it said, and all that believe were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. So it said it again. So whether they were at the actual place of worship or house to house, means there was provided someone opened a house. I say house to house, it was never the same house. It was somebody else and somebody else. And the people it's talking about that was doing this, it tells you from the fifth verse to about the eleventh verse what kind of houses they was dealing with. These ain't like next door. These was people, these was Israelites coming out of all these lands. And they were learning how to be brothers and sisters the right way. And I've met a lot of people so much through this faith. You know, I've been to places that I think I've never been. But because of a brother or sister that lived there, right? And vice versa. Right? And it's a beautiful experience, man. You know, Lord willing the kingdom, we're gonna see everybody, but for now we do the best we can. Right, so they broke bread from house to house, man. Right? And then you have brothers and sisters that part of their gift of the Holy Spirit is hospitality, is, right? So we have brothers and sisters up here that will open up their house. And, so we always want to keep that going. You know, we can't do it every time. I mean, let's be realistic, but never, in other words, what I'm saying, never lose sight of it. Because we all we got. At the end of the day, we all we got. And uh, it said, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Right? Singleness is the opposite of double-minded. So everybody was focused. And what helps to facilitate everyone staying focused is that whole each one teach one, everyone's together. But when you off to yourself a lot, you can tend to make the mistakes that comes with that. Lack of correction. So now when you get corrected around the body of saints, it's like shocking. Like not, I'm just saying. Right. So they were doing the right thing. And we're trying to follow in the footsteps of our great brothers and sisters that were down for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? It says, praising God and having favor with all the people. So they favored each other. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So that's how the Lord will add to the church when you have the people, excuse me, <coughs> the people doing something conducive to this type of environment. Right? So we stay together, look out for one another. Even if it's a text, even if it's a call, or, you know, I mean, we busy. But we're never too busy for one another. Right? They ain't just in here, but, you know, we deal with brothers and sisters from other parts of the country, parts of the world. So we want to keep that thing going. And uh, that being said, let's break the bread. All right, so we got a piece of unleavened bread. A sip of wine, let's do the prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, have mercy upon us and bless us as we take part in the Lord's communion. The bread and wine representing the body and blood of the Lord. 
Thank you, Father, in the name of Christ, for our family of saints. Amen. Amen. praises Israel so peace and blessings to all the brothers sisters and saints everybody scattered throughout the world we say we love you here in Boston and definitely peace and blessings to the brothers sisters and saints in Boston right. y'all stay strong and um, we're still trying to figure out what we're doing for the Passover so just stay tuned. We're close. We're close on, you know, whether it's going to be something specific to an area or if not. Either which way the Lord will be done. So whatever his will is, that's what will be done. And we're content with it. All praise. So with that said, um, we love you with the love of the Lord. Shout out to all the brothers, sisters, and the mothers, the fathers, the children. Husbands, the wives, the young men. All praises to the most high in Christ that we have one another. Y'all stay strong and stay committed in Christ's name and support one another, help one another. And for the ones that's going through some serious things, the loss of loved ones and different things, different, uh, how should I say, strongholds that the devil may have going on trying to mess with us. Our prayers are always with you. It is our job to pray for one another, so you stay strong and uh, just be patient. Be patient. Psalms 4 and 4, stand in awe, sin not, commune upon thy bed privily. In other words, watch the Lord work. Don't make hasty moves. Just be patient. You know, try to stay blameless. And tonight is not a night of mourning or a night of sorrow. It is a time of rejoicing. We we'll say the Lord got it. So let's stay positive. All praise. So, all right. Shalom and peace. Hey, come here, man. Come here. So they can see who's disturbing the class. Come on over here. This is uh, the best behaved brother in Boston. Uh, this is the best behaved. This is the remix of the Boston band. And his brother with him. But he cut up on, on a different level. Come over here. He's trying to run. But they good boys. They're good boys. When they focus, huh? Whoa, 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 you're gonna put my seat down. <laughs> you take my seat down. Let it go up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, peace and blessings. Tell me your name. What's your name? What's your name? Boston Bandit. <laughs> This is the brother Onias. <laughs> All right. Are you going to behave? Be a good boy. You get the prayers? All right. Say Shalom. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. He think it's time to run around. <laughs>